This is CNN International. The Jazz are cooking, but who's that unlikely key in the middle whose performance could be the difference this time? Also, what's the matter with the bullets? And whatever happened to the middle class in the Western Conference? All those questions and the answers are next. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Charles here with analyst Mike Glenn. Uh, Phil Taylor joins us later from San Francisco, but first we start with some sizzle. You know, there isn't a hotter team around, Mike, than uh, Houston. The Rockets have played through Akeem's two irregular heartbeat scares and just kept winning, especially on the road. The Rockets had bagged 10 of 11 away from the summit, and tonight they are playing in Portland. Let's go there now and see how the Trailblazers can match up against this club. Barkley sitting out due to nagging injuries, but he kisses Clyde for good luck against his former team. Kenny Anderson pushes it to Cliff Robinson, yeah. And Portland looking good early. Olajuwon to Mario Alley. Look at the give and go. Beautiful here. This is early action. P.J.'s got to like his chances. Shot clock winding down. Blazers would shoot 19%. Nothing would go here. And that was really the story through the first half as they couldn't throw it in the ocean. And the ocean is what, about 100 miles away? 52-49, Houston leads it. Again, Barkley sitting out. And uh, things still looking good for the Rockets on the road. The Rockets have sure lived up to the name. They should be playing in the Johnson Space Center because of the way they blasted out of the block. No team has wired these kind of starts together like the Rockets. Two of those starts led eventually to NBA titles, and so far this season, there is no let-up in sight. Now to San Francisco to welcome CNN uh, SI's Phil Taylor. Phil, what does uh, Coach Rudy Tomjanovich do to incite these kinds of beginnings in this team? It doesn't matter who's there, it seems. No, it really doesn't, Nick. I, and I think it's, it's not so much X's and O's. It's not the plays he draws up or the, or the defenses he... Uh, he uh, formulates, it's really that uh, he, he allows his players to relax. He's a very unassuming coach. He doesn't try to present himself as a genius. He doesn't <laughs> care if he's uh, mentioned in the same breath with Pat Riley and Phil Jackson. And I think that, that really allows his players' personalities to come forth. He'll even take suggestions on, on different plays when, when that uh, comes into play. So I think it's just that he, he's very unassuming and, and allows the Rockets to relax and just go out and play, and uh, it shows up in their, in their record. And he can coach, can't he, Mike? As good as the Rockets have been, one team uh, has their number and did have their number until last night. It's funny how yeah. they match up, huh? Yeah, exactly. The Sonics, the Supersonics have been just murder on this team, Nick. But the real weakness has been the forward position. They've really utilized Kemp and mm -hmm. Shrimp to their advantage. But uh, Rudy T has a Charles Barkley on his team now. Yeah. <laughs> Just taking a look at it. Of course... Clyde Drexler came up with a big night. They know they can always count on, on Clyde. But this Barkley was the guy here. I mean, Barkley had the big night, 26 points and 15 rebounds. Now, Akeem Olajuwon, no, he has a partner there that can take up the slack, can play physical, can rebound, and another go-to guy. And like you said at the beginning, he is not holding the ball that long anymore, is he, That's Charles? Right. He's yeah. giving it to Akeem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get along in the, like we do. In the, in, the, in the meantime, another Texas team has been having headaches. The Spurs were looking for bigger and better things with the return of David Robinson last week. Too bad Coach Bob Hill wasn't around to see it. The Admiral joined the lineup for the first time this season Tuesday night, but Hill was history Tuesday morning. His running feud with GM Greg Popovich cost the coach his job. It's at a point uh, when things like this happen where I think, you know, what do you do as a coach in this league to uh, keep your job? And obviously, it's, uh, it's not winning. Winning, uh, we won. Uh, we won championships. We won division championships. I think when you know and feel that a decision is, is right, uh, you've got to make that decision for the good of the group, irregardless of how bad the timing may be. And in this case, it is bad because it looks uh, quite self-serving uh, to do this the day David's returning. Uh, that's, in fact, a coincidence. This is the NBA. You know, I mean, I've, I've seen some of my best friends come and go from this team. And, uh, and you know, so it's just something we have to deal with and we have to move forward. In the meantime, here are the numbers. Hill averaged over 60 wins in each of his two full seasons in San Antonio. His record was terrible this season. But remember, David Robinson was missing. Phil, was Popovich simply convinced, even without the Admiral, Hill should have produced more or... Was there something else behind this firing? 
Well, I, I think he was convinced that Hill should have produced more, that the Spurs should have produced more, even going back to last season in the playoffs. You know, they were, they were bounced out uh, pretty uh, unceremoniously by Utah in the playoffs, and, and everyone said they were soft, and I think Popovich believed that too. He felt that Hill was not hard enough on them in practice, and that carried over to this year. And I, I don't think it was really a matter of, of their record without David Robinson. Um, uh, Popovich really thought that there was a, a basic problem with the, with the Spurs' attitude, and uh, getting Robinson back wasn't going to change that, so he went ahead and made the move. Is Popovich a short-term fix? If so, who's the more permanent solution here, Phil? Well, Popovich has been very careful not to really uh, define uh, what exactly he is, whether he's interim or permanent, but there are a lot of people who believe that Don Nelson is a, is a very strong candidate for that job. Uh, Popovich was Nelson's assistant in Golden State for a few years. He has great respect for Nelson, even though Nelson had a few... Uh, had a few uh, bad uh, bad moments in the last couple of years, but uh, Don Nelson, I think, is someone is a name you're going to hear a lot, maybe at, at the start of next season. Uh, interesting, Mike. You know the beauty of the NBA is uh, the season is so long. You know you could get back in it and make sure. playoffs be a completely different team when they hit that second season. Mm -hmm. But can they click with Robinson back and with Popovich coaching? And where are the missing ingredients? Why were they soft? Why didn't they go a little further in the playoffs? You know, they've had trouble reinventing themselves without mm -hmm. David. And any team would have that problem, Nick. I mean, look what happened when the Bulls lost Michael Jordan. They were all of a sudden a 500 team. So uh, that was a big part of the problem. You know, they tried to patch up the power forward position, and they thought they had all the elements in place, even and Dominique Wilkins and Vernon Maxwell. But it's a team that just could not reinvent itself. Take a look last night, though. They got their first win against the Dallas Mavericks. And look at them. I mean, they're really <laughs> celebrating. They're hugging uh, Popovich there. So they, they're bringing David along slowly, and they think that brighter days are ahead now to agree. Looks like they want to play for him, based on that mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, virtually the same team as the one that won 59 games last season. But given the current cast, are the Spurs destined to go only so far, though, regardless of who coaches them? I mean, what's the problem, in your opinion? Well, that question of, tw of toughness has been there for a long time, and, and that is a question that only David Robinson, when he's healthy, will be able to answer that. They're waiting for David to take them to a new level. It's not going to happen until he can do it. Okay, still ahead on the show, what would a show be without the Bulls, especially after their resident bad boy just came back? Is Dennis Rodman stretched too thin? How does Michael Jordan figure in this issue? We'll talk when this week in the NBA returns. Stay with us. the story like world sport. The waiting champion and a former champion led the way. Watch for frequent updates and complete half-hour wrap-ups of the day in sport only on CNN International. Nobody covers the world of sport like the people who cover the world. CNN International. And says the most up-to-date weather forecast on the web at CNN.com. Four-day forecast for over 400 cities worldwide. Forecast in satellite maps for 35 world regions, plus Doppler radar updated hourly. CNN Interactive Storm Center tracks the latest weather-making news, and Storm File traces the history of headline-making storms. The most complete international weather, now available at CNN.com. We're always here. No matter how difficult the story, no matter how remote the place, shedding light on world events 24 hours a day. CNN, CNN International, Headline News, CNN FM, and CNN Interactive, bringing news and information to a half billion people in over 200 countries. It's how the world gets enlightened. The networks of CNN, the world's news leader. Welcome back. The burning issue of all this season is going to be, can anybody beat the Chicago Bulls? Well, some say maybe the best hope for the opposition is maybe the Bulls will beat themselves. Dennis Rodman's focus has been a question. Last week on the show, you probably read between the beeps or read his lips during Rodman's post-game tirade that 
led to the Bulls suspending him two games. Chicago didn't miss a beat, though, without him and won both games. In fact, last night they took on the Hornets, and here came Rodman again. Would he behave? Well, watch off the Glenn Rice miss. Long rebound, always in position. One of 23 he would snag on the night. Watch Rodman banging down low. Hard fall, near scuffle. He keeps his cool. No harm, no fall. And now tied at 78 crunch time, Michael Jordan to Tony Kukoc in the corner. Drains the three. Kuchos, Kukoc has stepped up his game, and Chicago wins it at home. Mike, when Rodman is on, he can control an opponent and, of course, the boards, but his performances have been spotty this season. Yeah. Do you think at age 35 you've seen any signs of slippage in his game? Just a little bit, Nick, but I think a lot of it has been maybe what Michael Jordan has said, maybe he isn't quite as focused as he has been, but Michael is very good at keeping everybody focused, saying whatever it takes to make them play a better game, but let's face it, the expectations have risen for Dennis Rodman. Now everybody expects him to outplay the other team power forward every night. Very difficult to do. Interesting that uh, Michael would get involved. Here's a man who has a cologne named after him, and he's <laughs> telling Rodman, hey, you got too many distractions. Uh, <laughs> Phil, let me ask you in terms of Rodman. If it's a question of Rodman not trying, why doesn't Michael Jordan? I mean, does he uh, straighten him out? Will he listen? Have they actually discussed things? Well, this, this is going to be the ultimate test of uh, Jordan's influence. Because Jordan has tried to talk to Rodman. He was worried about Rodman's focus long before that tirade last week. Um, but Rodman has, really hasn't been very receptive to those talks. That's why you've seen Jordan come out and say some things in the press, kind of trying to challenge Rodman to, uh, to get that intensity back that he had last year. Um, it's anybody's guess, really, as to whether Jordan's going to be able to get Rodman back on the right track. Um, but I know that there are a lot of teams around the league who, who are hoping that Jordan won't be able to do it. Well, we'll get more on the Bulls, of course. We'll see them throughout the, uh, the week, and you could uh, see them Tuesday night, uh, and you'll scope them yourselves. And a big one is the Lakers and Shaquille descend on the United Center. You can see it all on TNT beginning at 8 Eastern. You know, the Bulls, though, know they are not home free. Beginning inside their own division, the Pistons are right on their necks. Detroit, under new coach Doug Collins, had won 16 of 20 when they blew into the Palace tonight to welcome one of the league's doormats, the Celtics. And, you know, they said later on, the Celtics are just a tough team to play. Grant Hill drives, spins around Antoine Walker, lays it in. Hill had 13 in the first quarter. How good is he? Greg Miner, watch him put up the jumper. It'll pop out. Todd Day misses the putback. Celtics held a three field goal, 16 points in the second quarter. And Mel ML Carr's team's in a 14-point hole at the half. Celtics, David Wesley, he had 25. Mike, as you said, he is a self-starter. He's really a self-made guy. Terrence, uh, Terry Mills to Otis Thorpe underneath. Thorpe with the slam. But the Celtics now move to 0-9 on the road. Look at this. Grant Hill, 25 points, 11 boards, 8 assists. And Hill said, you know, the Celtics are a tough team to play. They, quote, junk it up. They run. They trap. What he didn't say is they lose. Phil... ML Carr has uh, free reign. He's coach and general manager. The record says he hasn't done a good job with either. Does he fire himself from one, or is management thinking about a change in Boston? Well, there, there has been some thought about a change. Uh, they do like ML Carr. The, the organization likes him. Um, but a lot of people think that Larry Bird will eventually be the guy running that franchise mm. and that ML Carr might, might uh, restrict himself to coaching. Interesting. Now uh, we go to one of this week's features, our NBA insider, Jackie McMullen has thoughts and words about just how vital an aging veteran is to a young Pistons team that's winning big, as you saw. Also, the big man who could shove Utah finally over the top this time, and a coach who probably, as we discussed earlier, doesn't get enough credit. Rudy Tomjanovich, when we mention the great coaches in the league, we rarely mention him, and he should be mentioned. You know, if you think about what they did, they made a major trade to get Clyde Drexler to win that championship in the, near the, you know, the trading dialing, which is unheard of. Usually you can't get your team together in time. Then he takes on Barkley, whose personality is bigger than the entire NBA combined, and yet they come right out of the gates winning. So I think you've got to credit Tom Janovich a lot with getting these guys to work together. But I still think injuries catch up with them. You know, every year I say, no, Utah is not a championship caliber team. They're just a tier below. And last year they nearly made me look very foolish, and everybody else for that matter. Malone and Stockton are all-stars. They're Hall of Famers, there's no question about that. But they need more from the other guys. And when I look at their team, I'm going to be watching closely the development in the middle of Ostertag. Um, as a rookie last year, I think they had high hopes for him. 
Jerry Sloan, who's not known to do this, but had to get on him early and often, was very tough, blasting him publicly for his work habits and his efforts. And if Ostertag can develop the way I think they believe that he can, then you have a presence in the middle, a defensive presence. They don't need him to score a lot of points. They just need him to clog up the middle, get some rebounds, block a couple shots, much the way Mark Eaton did in the years when the Jazz were at their very finest. I saw uh, Joe Jumar say, and he's absolutely right, when Alan Houston got signed away, he said, everybody's, you know, predicting doom and gloom, and Joe Dumar said, did everybody forget I was on this team? And he's right. You know, Dumar, to me, has been the key to why this team has been able to maintain. Last year, I think he struggled a little bit with the young players, fitting in with Doug Collins' system. Now, Dumar has, has been established as the number two guy. Let's make no question, this is Grand Hill's team, and he has stepped up, too, and that's got to, we've got to credit him with some of this winning record. But a lot of it's got to do with Joe Dumar's, his professionalism, and his ability to still go out and play the 30 to 35 minutes a night. Now, can he keep that up all season? That'll be a big question mark for the Pistons. Just ahead, the Suns have done a 180. Could the turnaround continue tonight? We'll take you to, to Phoenix for some stories. Thank you. The country has a war-battered name, but it's rebuilding its image. I'm Riz Khan. Ask Lebanon's Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri about his country's effort to come back. Join us by phone, fax or email, only on CNN International. CNN World Report provides viewers around the world with the opportunity to see countries as they see themselves. Drawing from the unique perspectives of contributors in 150 countries, CNN World Report highlights the latest major news events, along with stories that reflect the regional culture. Hosted by Ralph Wayne this global forum allows the world's broadcasters to report the news as they see it. CNN World Report, only on CNN International. There are a lot of ways to look at our world, but only CNN International presents a view that cannot be seen anywhere else. With in-depth coverage of regional news and daily newscasts from Asia, the Americas, and Europe, anchored by reporters who've lived and worked there. Hope and peace. And in the coming months, CNN will provide more regional news than ever before. Covering the many faces of our ever-changing world is the goal of CNN International, the world's news leader. On CNN's Larry King Live, it's the role that won Shirley MacLaine in Academy Awards 13 years ago. Will lightning strike twice for this dynamo? Join Shirley MacLaine on the next Larry King Live, only on CNN International. Welcome back to This Week in the NBA. Phoenix was a horse that got left at the gate when the season started. The Suns were futile, losing their first 13. Now they're winning, and although rumors persist that anybody on the roster can be had, coach Danny Ainge will play the hand he's dealt and he's doing it tonight of course at home you can see that familiar purple and orange the Grizzlies in town Sharif Abdul Rahim nice move around Michael Finley he was a hot rookie recently but look at the kid who never went to college who is doing it in the pros Kevin Johnson he goes coast to coast he's healthy now and the Suns are looking good and boy do they need him Johnson also playing the D forces the bad pass leads to a Finley breakaway and he will polish it off. Halftime Suns led by 48-38. Brian Winter trying to fire up his troops. It didn't work, but look at Abdul Rahim with 28. Vancouver though goes down again. Meanwhile, the uh, Bullets lose or the Bullets win. They go west. Uh, they hadn't been playing that well lately, but uh, they'd won their last two games looking for softer opposition. Story here, uh, Latrell Spree Spreewell, 43 points, a losing effort. Chris Webber's triple-double, his first since the last time he played for the Warriors, but he did commit nine turnovers. Phil Taylor, back to you in San Francisco. Bullets GM Wes Unseld said he will not be patient. Is Coach Jim Lynham in any kind of trouble? Well, I think he could be. Uh, Lynham probably felt his collar get a little tighter when uh, <laughs> Unseld said that. Um, the, the Bullets have really invested a lot of money in Juwan Howard and Chris Webber and brought Rod Strickland over. And the, the fans really expected a winner, a big winner this year, 
And so the, they're, they're not going to be patient in line of, I think, if, if they are still floundering around the All-Star break, you could see a change there. Uh huh. Mike, what's missing here is that veteran leadership, one theory is that when the offense bogs down, there's nobody on the wing like a small forward just maybe create something off the dribble. Mm -hmm. I think they need to utilize Rod Strickland a little mm -hmm. bit more. Sometimes their forwards want to throw too many highlight passes. Just do the simple thing and let Rod Strickland be the creator. They have a great one there. They need to let him do it. Can Georgie Murison keep up? They want to play up-tempo, don't they? I think they have to play him off the bench some and mm -hmm. change the style of play when he comes in the game because he does not play the up-tempo with the first unit. Interesting. We're going to talk a lot more. In fact, our weekly conversation is next. The Western Conference. After those top four teams, the question is, where's the beef? We'll look into that and more in a moment. Planning your next trip? Navigate the World Wide Web to CNNHotels.com. Here, you'll access the latest information on over 2,000 CNN International Partner Hotels worldwide. Link to CNN Interactive, one of the top 10 sites on the web. It's the most detailed and easiest route to accommodations, rates, and room reservations. Before you check in, check out CNNHotels.com. I prayed for help until God sent me Michael. about an angel here? We can't be talking about an angel. That is definitely the weirdest thing I have ever seen. When I die in the name of the prayer, what kind of angel are you? Michael is an art angel. He battled Lucifer and threw him out of heaven. Well, that was a long time ago. So I grabbed the other bus blue tongue and picked Oh, man. Who's the elder bub? The other bus is Satan. Oh, Satan. I just thought... Halos? Yes. Inner light? Yes. I'm not that kind of angel. Michael. Rated PG. The NBA's Western Conference has always been intriguing for its wide-open offense, up-tempo game. But what's emerging again this season is the lack of depth. There are four marquee teams in the West who can beat anybody any night, any conference. But where's the middle class here? Only five teams have winning records, meaning there's potential for three clubs with losing records to limp into the playoffs, which is embarrassing. Guys, what do you think is going on here? Just a down cycle, Phil, or is it more than that uh, in the West? Well, I think uh, expansion has a lot to do with it. I think mm -hmm. that now you're seeing teams that... Uh, really are, are very thin and when they get injuries like San Antonio losing David Robinson or Phoenix losing Kevin Johnson they're disastrous they just can't recover from those things so I think that's it, it's just the talent is so spread out that that one uh, small break m one piece of the puzzle can really devastate a team yeah. absolutely right and then you look at teams like Dallas also that have had like injury to Mashburn a new coach new organization new chemistry there I think that's played a role is too. there chemistry there guys though you know Jason Kidd they said he didn't have a shot he was could be the whole package mm -hmm. I hear he's having trouble with Clemens' system uh, does Jimmy Jackson and Mashburn have they kissed and made up what's the deal well no they certainly haven't kissed and made up that that's a problem uh, there is, there is a problem, and actually there have been a lot of teams that have tried to bring in new players um, and, and are, are, have struggled to get them all to fit in well together. Um, so, but the other thing I think that's happening is that there are more good teams in the West than there are in the East, strangely enough. Really? You know, some of those dominant teams, Utah, the Lakers, Houston, Seattle, the, the, the lesser teams are having to play those teams more often and not play, play each other quite as much. So That's I think, a good point, uh, Phil. You're out in the West, and, you know, I don't know if he's tilting the balance there. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> Just you a little can... bit. Come on, Phil. Oh, some good teams out there. <laughs> but also, you look at a team like Utah that has, like, 14 of their next 17 games on the road. So I think some of these teams that are not playing well now are going to make up a lot of ground as they begin to know each other better, and sometimes the home and road thing equalizes as the that, season. That's exactly right, right Mike. And, and, and just watch out for a team like San Antonio and a team like Phoenix as mm. they get healthy and they start to, and the schedule starts to get a little better for them. I think you might see some teams make a, make a big push. So I really know, like what Phoenix is doing yeah. too, though, Nick, with that. The two guards, I like Sam Cassell, Kevin Johnson is healthy, and that's really helping them. I mean, they bring guys off the bench with a lot of firepower. Uh, they're bringing Danny Manning off the bench, Rex Chapman off the bench, and they're beginning to come together. So, as you mentioned, it's early in the season. Mm -hmm. It's a long ways to go, and 
Phoenix could still make the playoffs. Well, but don't you think, I mean, Manning never wanted to be a leading man. We've seen right. that. And now right. with the big guys gone, they've asked him to step up. And plus, I, I look at that club and I, and I see a KJ healthy, but uh, I, I, they're offering Sam Cassell around, it looks like. Is that right, Phil? I mean, this doesn't look like a team that's trying to gel. Well, that's true. I mean, they are in a tough position because they have so many guys who are going to be free agents, and they're really trying to decide what their team is going to be mm -hmm. next year. But I think that uh, even, even now you've seen uh, some improvement in the Suns, right. and they have started to get, to get it together a little bit. So um, I don't think it's going to be quite as bad a conference by the end of the season as it looks right now. All right. Well, as we said, it's a long one and an interesting one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good conversation. But would we think of passing up this? Our delivery of the week, I think not. <laughs> Time now for our Federal Express delivery of the week. The Sacramento for the Lakers and Kings. Eddie Jones and Nick Van Exel, a little give and go. Nick with the no look, Jones with the finish. A couple of the Lakers' young guns getting it done. Now keep an eye on Van Exel's head. It's like he's looking to the bench for a little help. Then the pass to Jones. And that's our Federal Express delivery of the week. information are essential for today's travelers. Make certain you choose one of these fine CNN International Partner Hotels next time you travel. For more information about these and other partner hotels, turn to page 300 on CNN Text where available. Dengue fever is a viral disease transmitted by the Aedes mosquito, an insect that usually lives in urban areas. Outbreaks have occurred frequently in the Indian subcontinent, 